Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen Libman, the president of the Center for the Performing Arts. And uh, I am honored to welcome you today as we celebrate a moment that we've been anticipating for a very long time. It has taken more than a decade of planning to bring us here today, including more than three years of construction work. Today, we rejoice in inaugurating a cultural resource unlike any other in the United States, a magnificent new facility that immediately be makes it one of the most extraordinary concert halls in America. In the presence of the visionaries here who have brought this dream to life, the mayor of Carmel, James Brainerd, the leaders of the Redevelopment Commission, the Carmel Redevelopment Commission, Ron Carter and Les Olds, architects from CSO, Brandon Bogan and Dan Moriarty, Mike Anderson, project manager, our board chair, Raleigh Dick, our season sponsor, St. Vincent Health, the brilliant design team of architect David M. Schwarz and Artex Chris Darlin, and our world-class artistic director, Michael Feinstein. In the presence of these luminaries, we are here to inaugurate the first major building of the Center for the Performing Arts, the Palladium. Ladies and, oh, sure, please, you can applaud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to begin our ceremony, please rise as we welcome the 38th Infantry Division Band of the Indiana National Guard, conducted by Staff Sergeant Robert Burns. Singing the national anthem is Lieutenant Colonel Eric Ebb of the Indiana National Guard.
จะมาทำก็ Well, that is just one example of the amazing sound that you will hear in in this hall. And it's important to remember that in the Palladium you will hear all different kinds of music. You've already heard a marching band, and before that you heard a bit of Carmel Brass. And after we're done, you will hear even more of Carmel Brass. Over the next few days, we will hold a number of opening festivities, and you, our audience, will get to hear the brilliance and richness and responsiveness of this hall. And now I'd like to introduce Chelsea Lee, a student at Lawrence Central High School. This lovely young woman will sing "America the Beautiful." Chelsea. For amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesty, above the fruited plains, America, America, God. On thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. God bless America. A student at Lawrence Central High School, and I, I foolishly asked her earlier if she needed amplification, but <laughs> clearly I was wrong. But you get to to see how beautiful a voice like hers sounds in a hall like this without any amplification. I, of course, need the amplification. Uh, now I would like to introduce to you the man who was the first to imagine this great project, a man who inspired others and persevered. Many people are granted the title of civic leader. But here's someone who knows what those words really mean. This gentleman is also the recipient of the 2011 Mayor's Award from Americans for the Arts for Public Leadership in the Arts. Please join me in welcoming the Mayor of Carmel, the Honorable James Brainerd. Thank you, thank you very much, and thanks for being here on this historic day as we officially open the Palladium at the Center for the Performing Arts. A project of this magnitude requires many, many talented people working together and working diligently to build a building this beautiful. And no project such as this can be completed successfully without the support of the community in which it's built. And as a community, we have worked for really a decade and a half in order to provide Central Indiana with a state-of-the-art, acoustically perfect concert hall. Many of you have heard me tell the story about. Campaigning in 1995 and being asked over and over again, "Where is Carmel's downtown?" 
and it was clear. In fact, I got different answers. Some people said it's here, and there was disagreement about this. And while we had beautiful neighborhoods, we didn't have that identifiable center. But it was clear that residents and local business leaders wanted a place to connect, a central place to go for entertainment, and a place to take visiting friends and colleagues. And that was the inspiration for our city center project and the reason we felt we needed to include entertainment options, one of the reasons, in this new entertainment area. And in order to determine what type of arts venue was missing in this region, we interviewed arts groups from throughout the area, including the Carmel Symphony Orchestra, the Gregory Hancock Dance Theater, the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, the two Purdue University bands and performing arts groups, the Carmel Repertory Theater. And we discovered that our hunch was right, that the region could benefit from a true purpose-built concert hall. We also heard from these groups about their passionate belief that the arts are good economic development drivers. They're great tools for communities to create jobs. They're great tools for communities to create economic development and commerce. And so this investment in the Center, Performing, Center for the Performing Arts will pay off, just not for years, but for generations and for centuries as Central Indiana competes with other cities all over the globe for high paying jobs, for corporate headquarters, and economic development opportunities for our children and grandchildren and their children and grandchildren. We've already seen millions, hundreds of millions, invested in nearby properties. We have seen companies attracted to locate here and had residents move here to be near this vibrant new downtown we're calling City Center. And we're truly fortunate to be able to live in a community that has the foresight, the ability, and the will to build an environment rich in cultural amenities that sets the stage for future growth and creates a landmark that will leave a legacy for generations to come. As you look at the history of human civilization. Progress always occurs in our cities. Advancements to our human civilization over the centuries and over the millennia have always taken place in our cities. And more than that, they've taken places in the cities that honor the arts, that create venues for the arts. And it's particularly important, and this has been observed since the time of classical Greece, that when we have a democratic republic, when we have citizens making decisions, that the arts become a forum for public and civil discourse. So many times, great ideas are first expressed through the arts. And that, in addition to our econo economic development opportunities, is why building this building is so important and why anchoring our downtown with an arts venue is so important. It's always dangerous to start thanking people for a project of this magnitude because undoubtedly I will unintentionally leave someone out. But with that disclaimer, I first want to thank all the supporters in the city of Carmel who have talked with their neighbors, who have shown us political support, who have supported this venue early on with their dollars and with, with their hearts. I'd also like to thank the Carmel Redevelopment Commission and especially my good friend and colleague, Ron Carter, who helped conceptualize this project, has been instrumental in its completion. I'd like to thank the current and previous members of the City Council of the City of Carmel who have supported this project. I want to thank Les Olds, the first a consultant and then later director of our Carmel Redevelopment Commission, who has pulled all the right people together year after year to make sure that we've been able to build a building like this. I want to thank David Schwarz for understanding our desire for a landmark, an iconic building that Carmel will be known by for centuries. 
And I want to thank Artec Consultants from New York City for perfecting the acoustics in this building so that the performances here will be of a quality unsurpassed. I want to thank our architect of record, CSO Architects, for supervising the completion of the project plans. I want to thank Shield Sexton, local firm, for building this world-class facility with true craftsmanship. And I've just got to divert from the script here for a minute and talk about being here for the Hard Hack concert a few days ago. I saw workers in here as they listened to the Wright brothers with tears in their eyes. I talked to people that were here in the dead of winter excavating it and working outside to make this beautiful building. They were here with their children, their spouses, and they were wandering around the building showing their, uh, their pride in it, showing their families exactly what they did. And it made me so proud to think that they had so much pride in their craftsmanship and what they in what they did. And I want to thank, have a special thank you for those who have offered and are serving on the Performing Arts Center Foundation. This is a public-private partnership and without these private individuals stepping up and saying we're going to help, we could not have done it. I'd like to thank Stephen Libman, the Executive Director of the Center for the Performing Arts who has tremendous amount of management expertise in operating a facility like this. We're fortunate to get Stephen and Keith that have moved to Indiana and take on a venture like this and provide this center with his leadership. And finally, Michael Feinstein. Michael is a five-time Grammy-nominated musician and world-renowned performer who has shared his love and his passion for music and, his, and, and this great American songbook genre with the community here in Carmel in central Indiana. He is the artistic director for the Center for the Performing Arts and has also made the Palladium home for his foundation, the Great American Song, the Foundation to Preserve and Collect the Great American Songbook. And please join me in welcoming Michael today. He deserves special applause because he got two hours of sleep last night and had to fly from Palm Springs. And I'm not sure the applause should be for, the two, for only getting two hours of sleep or having to come back to these temperatures. <laughs> Probably both. And I pr predict that when you hear him perform, you won't have any idea he only got two hours of sleep. We should be very proud that as a community, working together, we have created something truly unique, something that will last for centuries. People who create landmark structures such as this believe in the future. They're visionaries, they're planners, they're architects, and they're the craftsmen who constructed it with precision. And they all represent hope, and they represent spirit for the future. We built this building for the future, but we also built it for our descendants, for the people that have created our wonderful culture of art, of music, of dance, all those that have come before us. Because in our time, it's our responsibility to perpetuate those centuries of artists who have handed us this wonderful culture we have in this civilization. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Brainerd. Thank you for those very, very kind words. You know, I was looking over my contract, and I have a no snow clause in my contract. So. <laughs> it's been violated several times. Um, it now gives me great pleasure to introduce the artistic director of the Center for the Performing Arts, Michael Feinstein. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to be here, wonderful to see all of you, to share this exciting day. It's also great that we have, um, we have our biggest fans with us. <laughs> 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 I, 
I don't accept mercy applause, but thank you. It's very nice. To... I couldn't resist it. I think, oh, our biggest fans are here. So, this is a wonderful day for so many people. I, of course, want to congratulate Mayor Brainerd and the members of the Carmel Redevelopment Corporation and all of you who have dreamed about making this concert hall a reality, who have worked so hard to make this time happen, to make this time come. And, and here it is. It's amazing. This journey is incredible. And I've never seen anything like this hall. I've had the opportunity of performing in a lot of places around the world. And this is unique, and this is special. So I hope that all of you will really take a moment to uh, look at what you've all achieved, to look at the, um, the architecture and the beauty of this structure, and also to listen to this hall, because this is a very special place acoustically. And what I think you'll hear in this space is a sound that is richer and clearer than sound that you can hear almost anywhere else. This is not only a great achievement for people in this region of the country, but it's a great achievement for all over America, because we'll be attracting people from, from all over. Artists, of course, from Los Angeles and New York and Chicago and anywhere you find those who want to uh, share their art with others. And this is a place that will inspire artists to give their very best. There's no question about that. You know, the minute that you walk in the door, you feel something extraordinary here. And uh, that's the reason that I'm here, to share this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with all of you. Because all of you have, uh, have built this place. This is an extraordinary example of a vision that has come to pass because of a community wanting it and realizing what it will do, not only for us here, but for the fabric of our country at a time when arts are so desperately needed. How it changes people's lives uh, forever. That's the reason I'm very proud not only to be the artistic director, but to bring uh, my foundation for the preservation of the Great American Songbook. Uh, because here at the Palladium, we have an opportunity to offer programs that have a great breadth of variety. Uh, this will not only be about the Great American Songbook, but our goal is to have an inclusiveness of every tradition of music. It is really about that variety, to bring all different kinds of music, theater, and dance to the Palladium, and that is determined by all of you, by what all of you want and what we can share together. Uh, as for the Great American Songbook collection, uh, right now we have a, a sample of uh, that collection that will be on display. And uh, the range of items uh, is all kinds of ephemera and photographs and sheet music, uh, uh, lyric sheets. Uh, it's quite a variety of material ranging from, from the Gershwins to uh, Elvis Presley. So, uh, and, and beyond, of course. These are objects that um, will bring all of you in contact with uh, the heritage of the Great American Songbook, which has been the bridge for every different kind of genre of music that has sprouted from it, and uh, is, in the opinion of many, our greatest uh, American export, the music that has defined us and uh, is how we are perceived by people around the world. So that's all a part of what is being achieved here at the Palladium. Uh, what is coming next is uh, very exciting to think of what is happening in the next several days and what will happen for years to come. And it makes me think about one particular song out of the zillions that have been created. There's one song that has come to mind to me that it's a song of um, optimism, uh, optimism of our country about abiding faith in our future and a song of direct simplicity. It's a song by Jerome Kern and uh, Buddy De Silva, and it's a particular phrase in, in my mind that's, that's, that's sort of repeated, and that phrase is, a heart full of joy and gladness will always conquer sorrow and strife, because this is an example of a vision that has happened because of optimism, because of belief in the faith of what we can do as a people and what we can create artistically. And so, as you look at this hall, and as you listen to it, think about the fact that it is something that you have created, that this physical structure has come from all of your imagination, from all of your hearts and minds. And that's something to be very proud of. I thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. Thank you.
Thank you, Michael. What, what is uh, especially gratifying is as we have launched our, our first season, which uh, opens uh, on, on, well, we have our gala on the 29th, which is, of course, starring Michael and Chris Bodie, Cheyenne Jackson, Dionne Warwick, and Neil Sadaka, and it's going to be an amazing event. <laughs> And then we roll right into a, uh, our, our first classic concert with the Lincoln Center Chamber Orchestra, the Miro Quartet, and Lynn Harrell. And for our very first season, which is really a partial season, we've already sold, now we're up to 22,000 tickets, and three of those concerts are sold out. The Vienna Choir Boys, Vince Gill, and Michael Feinstein. <laughs> We are also very pleased today that the brilliant design and acoustical team are here with us. And I would like to introduce to you two very important and special individuals. David M. Schwarz, who guided the design for the Palladium. This was really, along with the mayors, this was his vision. Along with Chris Darland, who is the principal consultant from Artec, the acousticians. They will both speak about the, uh, David will talk about the design, and uh, Chris will talk about the acoustics of the facility. First David, and then Chris. So, uh, David? Good morning. Um, I, I'm somewhat embarrassed because I wasn't told I had to speak until this morning. Um, so this is somewhat um, extemporaneous. And even though my office failed to tell me until this morning that I was speaking, I do want to thank them for their contribution to making all this happen. So Craig and Steve, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for putting me up here entirely unprepared. Um, <laughs> In any case, I think most importantly, um, I think that this building is not a translation of my vision, it's a translation of your hopes. What architecture can do is it can create people to, can cause people to create their highest um, products, their highest aspirations, and their highest goals. Um, the mayor has thanked everybody for what they have done. Uh, Michael has thanked people for what they have done. I want to thank you all for what you're going to do. I want to thank you for the life you're going to bring to this community, the life you're going to bring to my building. And the point of the architecture here is not for it to remain empty and cold, but for ra rather to inspire you to come together as a community, to celebrate as a community, and to create as a community. And what I want, my job is done, I'm lucky. Um, the mayor's job in terms of this building is done. Uh, Michael, Steve, and the rest of you's work is just beginning. And I don't want you to think that it is really Michael's work or Steve or Steve's work, it's your work. It is for you to bring life to this building, it is for you to give this building its soul, it's for you to make this building an, an integral part of your community. And for my complete certainty that you're going to do that, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here this morning. On behalf of my colleagues at Artec Consultants, I wish to congratulate Mayor Brainerd, the members of the City Council and the Redevelopment Commission, and all our colleagues on the design team uh, that have worked so hard and with such enthusiasm to bring this Palladium project to a completion. Uh, as my colleagues can readily attest, there is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that go into the creation of such a complex building. And we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge the skill and dedication of the men and women who actually built this hall from the ground up. They made our vision a solid reality. We heartily congratulate them and we thank them for their hard work. I dare to remind the mayor that we at Artec uh, have been working on this project for over 10 years ever since our first meetings with him in 1999 when he came to our office in New York to share his remarkable vision for the Renaissance of Carmel. We are very grateful and very proud to have been able to work so long with him uh, on such an important project. And after three months of a very arduous yet fruitful breaking in process, we are very excited to be here to celebrate the opening of this building and we look forward with great anticipation to what will be, we think, a most successful and entertaining gala opening concert. Stephen Libman has asked that I comment on what makes this concert hall unique. Uh, it's not an easy question to answer in two minutes, 
uh, so I shall try to be brief. Many of the things that make this concert hall work so well acoustically are not readily apparent or visible or obvious. Behind these walls, below us and above us, are the various elements of carefully engineered mechanical, electrical, and structural systems that will ensure that this hall does not let in any unwanted noise uh, intrude on the performances that will be held here. The air conditioning system, the performance lighting dimmers, the loudspeakers, even the seats that you're sitting in now have been carefully designed and considered to reduce noise, and in some cases, to eliminate noise completely. Architecture is also very important to acoustics. The wonderful neoclassical design of this hall provides a lot of thick plaster surfaces with an abundance of molding details and architectural uh, details that reflect and diffuse sound wonderfully. The ability of the audience to see clearly and to see the performers is also a very important factor in the success of the acoustics of a hall. Simply put, if you have trouble seeing a performer, you will have trouble hearing the performer. So visual obstacles are also sonic obstacles. The design team worked very hard to create a space that was intimate with a seating layout that had excellent sight lines. Certainly, the people that are up in the upper balcony uh, will have a great example of how this works. Anyone sitting up there will quickly note how close they feel to the stage and how clearly they can see the performers. Our mantra during the design was no bad seats. Of course, the most obvious answer uh, about acoustics is quite literally floating above our heads, the glass acoustic canopies. As some of you uh, may have already learned from news reports on TV or on the newspapers, the acoustic canopies, and there are four units here above us, serve a very important acoustic function. Essentially, the mass of the glass provides a reflecting surface that redirects the sound coming from the orchestra out to you, the audience. It's important to get the sound energy out to the audience and to the auditorium, to your ears, as soon as possible. Uh, without that sound energy, we wouldn't be able to alter the acoustics to suit the performance on stage. The acoustic canopies also help the musicians of the orchestra to hear each other, and therefore to communicate more effectively with each other. An orchestra that can hear itself means that it plays uh, much better because the sections can actually hear each other very well and adjust to each other as they play, and they can hear and better adjust to what the maestro is directing them to do. And by adjusting the height of the canopies, we can tailor the acoustics of the hall to best suit the music being performed on the stage and to best serve the musicians. The Palladium has the great distinction of being the first concert hall in the world to have a motorized acoustic canopy system that utilizes only glass as its reflecting surface. The past three months of test concerts have demonstrated that the glass of the acoustic canopies works extremely well as a reflector. We can now say with certainty that the canopies not only look good, but sound good as well. So hopefully this quick summary has given you a better sense of what you'll be hearing as you enjoy this concert hall over the next 100, 150, 250 years. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chris. I, I, Mayor Brainerd has said that the Palladium will be here, I think, for several thousand years. So I just want to just want to clarify that. Um, and I also want to echo what David said. This is this is really your facility, and uh, this is your center for the performing arts. So we do all of this to, to, for you. And I want to thank my incredible hardworking staff, our hardworking staff. When Michael and I started here a little over a year ago, there were two people on the payroll, and now we have over 40 people on the payroll. So we are growing in order to serve you and to create one of the finest performing arts centers in the country. It is now my, my great privilege to introduce two very dedicated individuals from the Carmel Redevelopment Commission, Les Olds, Executive Director, and Ron Carter, former President and current City Councilman. Gentlemen, if you would please share with the audience the Palladium Dedication Plaque. And I think you have a few words to say too.
thank you very much. That, that plaque is uh, also uh, been, been attached to the building on the west side, out, right out this, uh, this uh, exit door. And it's quite beautiful because it recognizes the visionaries behind this project, especially Mayor Brainerd, the city council, and, uh, and members of the Carmel Redevelopment Commission. Well, the Palladium is certainly a dream come true. And before we cut the ribbon, just a reminder that you're invited to spend all day in the hall with us today. Carmel Brass will perform in just a few moments. Listen as they premiere an original composition by Central Indiana resident Scott Jurek called The Palladium Suite. Then starting at 1 p.m., Take Center Stage, and you saw some of the auditions for Take Center Stage in the video, Take Center Stage gives the hall a marathon run of talent. I caught several of the performers earlier this week and they are quite amazing. And now we're ready for the big moment, and it's time to cut the ribbon. If I could have everyone here, please, in the front, take your scissors. Let's step up to the, uh, to the, uh, to the ribbon here. Now what we're going to do is, Carmel Brass, we're gonna need a fanfare. I'm going to count to three, and then on three, we're going to cut the ribbon. Indiana and I and so many people here are so excited to be here to be a part of this and uh, it's uh, actually a new beginning but a long time coming so I'm just thrilled to be here. It's a magnificent facility it's just incredible all they've done all the work and the craftsmanship is just beautiful it's just like perfection and the music and the sound is incredible. opportunity to see world-class music, uh, world-class art to our community. It's going to be having opportunities that we've never had before here in Carmel. It's right here. It's, and we'll have it forever. This is an outstanding structure, outstanding building. As an engineer, I have maybe a higher appreciation for this kind of a building, this kind of facility than, than common folks. But I'm very, very impressed with the way that it was built, the way that the sound uh, in it carries and acoustically perfect. This is just a wonderful addition to our uh, community and this is going to serve our children and grandchildren for decades and, and generations to come. Oh, I love the sound. Um, my daughter was one of the tuning concerts here and she sings in the accents and we hear her sing all the time and when they sang here it was just, it was amazing how spectacular the sound was and how different it really made it. Wow, well obviously when you look at a building like this there's nothing like it in the Midwest. The vision all goes to Mayor Brainerd. Obviously it was his vision, his dedication and being willing to, um, you know, put it, put the idea out there when a lot of people thought it was crazy. Great cities are where advances in human civilization are made, and those cities always have a focus on the arts. And this venue will give the people in central Indiana and other great art venues. I think art is particularly important to a representative democracy because new ideas, civil discourse, there's so many times that new idea comes out of a play comes out of an idea in a piece of literature or is somehow expressed in music or another art form. Arts 
are an indispensable part of a representative democracy. Well, Mayor Brainerd came to my office, God, it's got to be six years ago now, and said he wanted to talk about concert halls. And concert halls are one of my very favorite things. So I was more than happy to talk to him about concert halls. What's particularly unique about this site is that it is four-sided, that there's no back to this building. And to create a building that has uh, of this sort that has no back is complex. So I started looking for buildings that have a similar precedent and looked uh, and drew heavily on Andrea Palladio um, because it seemed appropriate in its perfection to what Karma was uh, trying to accomplish here. Well, to see it go from a, really a pile of dirt to begin with and then watch the structure go up and the outside take form and then to see the finish on the inside is just spectacular. This is pretty much state of the art. So I think this is important to have those things. It's actually nice to have a car more because there's so much in Indianapolis that sometimes the uh, parking would be a good big issue. So I think the parking is good and then that access is very nice. And I think it's pretty nice to have it. And it's just, been, I think it's really good. Although I'm not a Carmel resident, but I think it's just, uh, I just would like to come up to, to attend the concert from now on. Well, overall, you know, the size of the Palladian, I think it's just right. Um, itself, it's not like overwhelmed, as you know, really, really grand, but at the same time, it does give a very professional, very uh, so-called uh, nice, for the, you know, the audience to come together to really enjoy the music and the performance art. I just love all of it. I love the looks of the concert hall and just, they have just thought of everything. It's just gorgeous. It's unbelievable that we have something like this here. Ron Carter, also as the president of the Redevelopment Commission, should get a lot of credit for, because he actually had to be the good lieutenant to make sure that the idea that Mayor Brainerd had was followed through as the Redevelopment Commission. Well, one of the things that I really like to, to tell people about is that over the last uh, 14 years, it's been a thought in my mind about the mayor and I, one cold January night, 14 or 15 years ago, standing in the parking lot of what was Muldoon's, just 100 yards east of here, and the mayor saying, this is where we're gonna have the new city center. And it was so, uh, uh, I guess, interesting to me to see how during these years the vision has really come along. One of the things I've learned in, in being involved in government is that you have to have a lot of patience, that projects take a long, long time. This has taken a long time, but I think, frankly, today, uh, it, it all of a sudden has flooded into me that this is worth it. This is wonderful. The building is so outstanding. Well, it will be a destination, that's for sure, and it's going to be known worldwide, and I think it'll bring a lot of corporations up, uh, come to Carmel, and, uh, well, just the whole thing is a draw. Wonderful for Carmel. We have to be able to compete with cities all over the world for those good employers to be able to attract these top people that they want. And it's vitally important for us to create the environment, including cultural amenities, as well as parks and trails and a walkable downtown, that, that makes us competitive as a city. So we can stand up and stand tall next to places in Southern California, next to places in Florida, next to places in Europe, and say, locate your company here, because our quality of life in Carmel, Indiana, in Central Indiana, is just as good as it is anywhere on this globe.